so five. And um, as you all uh, realize, we had um, an appeal come in, a complaint appeal come in. So I've arranged, that's why we have a different agenda. We arranged the schedule so that we could accommodate um, Emily and, and then sort of focus on getting our work done for the, for the last half. And that way, hopefully we can kind of get through the things that we need to do on our agenda. Um, you know, open it up to public comment, but it doesn't look like we have any of the public here. So um, I'm gonna, unless anybody objects, um, we are gonna go into executive session for the complaint appeal. So I'm sorry, Orca, that means you just got yourself going, but. Um, I move to enter executive session on uh, an appeal hearing. Do we have a second? I second that. Seconded by Sarah. So we have that, Chelsea. I you know you're yes. new on this. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we're gonna go into executive session. No, Sorry about the delay, Teresa. We had uh, a hearing that we had to do and it ran over longer than we expected. Um, so hopefully it worked. But didn't inconvenience you too much. I just wasn't sure if you guys were coming or not, that's all. <laughs> Hard to tell if I, I knew I had the right date, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure. So, um, okay, so you guys all have the audit, I'm assuming? Yes. Yes. Electronically or, um, obviously this is all very old news considering June 30, 22 has already ended. So I'm mainly going to just try to talk about um, the governance letter, which is addressed to you guys. Um, and then just ask if you guys have any other questions. Um, so first of all, you received the unqualified audit report, which is, you know, the um, still the best audit report you can get. And then the governance letter is just uh, a way for me to communicate a couple of things with you, as you probably remember. Um, it really hasn't changed a whole lot from last year, but I'll just kind of go over it. Um, it. One thing I just need to let you know that there are estimates in the financial statement and the, the biggest estimate in the financial statements is of uh, depreciation on your capital assets. Um, because we never really know how long those are going to last. Um, we had no significant difficulties with performing the audit. We had a couple of uncorrected misstatements that were noted in the audit, one being um, just accrued compensated absences were understated, and uh, the current year um, FSA liability overstated. Neither one of these were um, material, otherwise I would have asked you to do them. Um, we didn't have that many actual regular adjustments in your financial statements, um, just one adjustment. Um, I'll keep going because I do want to talk about stuff that takes us more time. Um, we did not consult any other outside independent accountants. Um, on page three of this letter, there talks about, again, checking savings and investment accounts that still have the old school district's name, or they did as of June 30, 21. So you really need to get those. I mean, most of them, you know, every year it's less and less, but there are still are a few that still are in um, the district's names that no longer exist. So you really should get those changed. <laughs> Uh, well, I can I can go into detail about what's going on with it if you guys have questions after. Uh, I mean, a part of this has to do with, with the treasures and the schools, and part of it um, also stuff still being in RTCC. Most of the ones that are still kind of in other names have to do which was i'm going to come up next to which is the custodial and scholarship funds 
um, the custodial funds are now called, they used to be called agency funds, but now they're called custodial funds, according to GASB. Um, and this is where, um, and I know that part of the reason why they weren't done for June 30, 21 was the accounting software, but you really need to get all of these funds on the school district's um, accounting system. Um, we do spend quite a bit of time accumulating all this information, um, which is, you know, a little bit outside of the audit scope. Um, uh, and it's just a matter of getting that onto the accounting system. Um, and then we recommend that you uh, adopt a fund balance policy. This goes back to Gazi before. Um, so, I mean, again, not a whole lot's changed in, since last year, but there is, uh, you know, since June 30, 20, as far as items that, that we think are significant, mo mainly is just getting the accounts in your name and um, working on the scholarship and custodial funds which are kind of outside the business offices, you know, authority. Where, you know, where authority. are those? Are those at AG Edwards or with, what's his name? So the, the, the request has been to get the extracurricular, the custodial funds as part of the general ledger. Five years ago, we were supposed to transition to a state-based financial operating system our current operating system, which is done with Tyler, does not support the ability to bring those in. So we have been waiting for the state to follow through on what it was supposed to do five years ago. Mm -hmm. We have checked um, to update Tyler to be able to do this is an $80,000 cost. Um, I have budgeted for that because I was expecting the state to make a decision during this legislative session about the fact that, hey, the um, state software that we were trying to have everybody use is such crap, um, we're doing away with this, this law. They didn't do away with the law, so again, we're sitting in limbo for another year. So unless the district wants to, me to pay $80,000 for something that might go away in a year when the state mandates something different, I'm happy to do that. Mm -hmm. But that's a question of whether this rises to the level because these things are in their own ledgers, they're under QuickBook, they're just not brought over onto the summary ledger, um, which is, is managed by Tyler. Um, right. And, and, I, so, and I, I think that there could be a, so I do some work to get it all summarized into uh, a trial balance system that I use. And maybe that, and, and I, Robin could definitely do it. I've just never really pushed for her to do that. She did help me this year because the custodial funds needed to have a little bit different of reporting. Um, and, you know, so maybe that's something that, you know, it, it doesn't, it just needs to be all accumulated. So we're not just chasing down every little scholarship fund under the sun, right? So, you know, part, and I'm, you know, I'm part in of that. I'm in agreement with you that it, it needs to be done because um, I, I came from a financial background. Um, but again, we're in this limbo where we even called the state and said, did you guys make a decision? Are we safe spending the $80,000 for Tyler? And they couldn't give us an answer. Um, yeah. Because they said, yeah, you can, but the odds are you may, it may all go to waste because you're going to get forced with the system. So the state in its infinite wisdom did what it always does and says, we're not going to make a decision on this. We're going to put together a study committee to look at it for a year. Teresa, yeah. do you, do you audit other school districts? Do you find this is a common, uh, occurrence? Um, Yes, we, we do, which I'm going to bring up this subject after, but we do, we have in the past audited lots of school districts, um, although we are reducing the number of school districts we're doing. Um, and sometimes they just have it as a separate fund right inside their accounting system. Um, but it's always been a struggle on all schools to have this done because it's kind of like each school you know, the scholarships are kind of, like nobody's kind of really overseen in one fellow swoop everything. So <laughs> there definitely is stuff that's getting that sometimes is, is a problem. Um, uh, just to give you guys a heads up, and I have told Robin um, 
this is June 30, 22 is going to be the last year that we're performing this audit because we are uh, kind of forced into making some decisions because we can't find staff and our um, audit, our tax business is, is just really very busy. So uh, that kind of worries me as, you know, like the transition just to us from the last auditor took a long time. And part of it was these, you know, these scholarship accounts. But I mean, I think Robin has a good handle on it and I have trial balances that I can share with her to move forward. Um, but that is something that, you know, if it was all in your accounting system, it would be there and not in a separate one, right? So, but any auditor will be able to follow it. I'm not, you know, it just will take, just to make it easier for them having it in one place. And probably what I'll do is just this year, really try to work with Robin to, maybe have her do the piece that I was doing and then that that will get away that, that would take away this <laughs> comment because at least it's all like she's providing it to me if you know what I mean okay. instead of me trying to accumulate you know every little scholarship account which a lot of them now are combined that what happened is the transfer from you know brain tree that all all the districts they slowly are getting the scholarships into the new name and then sometime combining them into one account. So just having so many checking accounts and making and savings accounts, making sure you have them all is always problematic when other people are signing, you know, making sure that it's all complete. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that's all I really have because like these numbers, like I said, they're so old. I don't really want to talk. I mean, we can talk about what kind of your fund balance was, but everything was pretty much assigned for um, other, per, you know, basically for future budgets. And I'm sure you've made a lot of decisions that I'm not even aware of right now, you know, during June 30, 22 um, and forward. So uh, obviously, you had quite a bit of fund balance, but I know a lot of it was allocated for, for different reasons. But if you happen to look on page 11 of the audit, it kind of shows all the fund balances and what they were. Um, um, I had a, on the fund balance policy, um, we were trying to get a, a model of it. Um, you know, my understanding of uh, fund, uh, fund balance policy is it's really kind of establishing what the minimum amount of money is going to be in a specific fund, defines what the fund is used for, and defines what the district will do to replenish the fund if we ever go below the threshold. But it didn't feel in talking with Robin that that was the same definition that was being used here. Um, and so I had, had just questions about that so that we can investigate it to try to get, get this in, in place. Yeah, did I, I, I can't recall right now, but I feel like I've sent a couple of them that other districts, I mean, most school okay. districts have adopted these, so we should be able to find a policy from another school district. This was just a Gasby, it's old now, that basically said you needed to, you know, really say who could commit funds or, um, and when they needed to be committed. Uh, so, but again, you guys, you know, the, school districts in the state of Vermont are really under the statute and what you can do and what you can't do. So you kind of have overall fund balance, you know, because everything is supposed to be somewhat assigned to, you know, the next year's budget, basically, if you're not using it for something. So the policy could be I, follow the state rule. <laughs> possibly, but I can send you another, I, I don't know if I did it. I, been a while, but I can ask around or Robin can ask also Vermont leagues of cities and towns if they have one. Oh, perfect. That, I, can, I can reach out to them. Okay. Gotcha. Is there any other questions? I, I just had one quick question regarding this fund balance policy. Yeah, she was no, just talking sorry. about it. Oh no, that's all right. But go ahead. What no, was your question? Okay. 
And that's it. I'm all set. I don't think she heard you. So she doesn't have a question after all. So our, uh, okay. Um, but as far as you you were looking at everything, everything is looking um, in order. Um, I always wonder, do we have enough eyes on everything as you sort of looked at the process processes in the in the district? You mean segregation of duties? That yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you have you know outside people doing bank reconciliations, different people you know signing the checks. You guys are looking at the warrants. Um, we did not. You know, we don't feel like there's any problem there that we that we noted in our procedures i mean and that you know in the past there was we did have some issues and those have all been cleared up you know like and a lot of it really just had to do with the you know getting your books to match the audit and you know robin does a really good job with the numbers um you know as far as everything being approved it, it appears with the you know with the invoices that we looked at that everything was approved the way it was supposed to be and there was purchase orders and complete mm -hmm. sign offs and you know each department that signs and stuff but again you know we're just kind of doing you know a random pull random yeah. pull not even a sample so but and then as far as um you know the single audit all the federal dollars it appeared everything was being followed according to um the standards that you know most of the money most the, your major program in 2021 of course had to do with all the covid money and really those were uh, what you could spend that on and what you could do with that was pretty open so that you know everything that appeared to be you know you pretty much follow what the state suggests and everything we did not mm -hmm. find issues okay great now and then like, they... you know like hot you know hot lunch now everything was there was no testing you know it was for everybody so it wasn't it's pretty easy to follow those rules at that point mm -hmm. do we have any other questions for it? All right. Well, we all have the letter. We all have the audit. And um, so, so, and you've let us know that we can have you audit this coming year, but it's the year after that we'll. Yeah. So, and I, when I spoke to Robin about it, I said, you know, probably sooner than later, starting to look, getting the proposal out to look for somebody. Um, it's just one of those one of those things, yeah. Which we like school district audits, but we um, we have to give up something. And there's a lot of requirement to stay up with standards and extra schooling that we need. And uh, so we're kind of petering out all of our governmental audits at this point. Okay. Could change in the future, but that's right now is what we're what's happening with us. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. So that's done. We're at eight oh nine, but we were moving on to EL two point seven. So that was whether or not we wanted to make a change in the wording to um, our executive limits uh, policy 2.7. And that was in uh, just the very last section of the policy. And I think I have, and that was Lane went to Pietro. He had Pietro read through it. Yeah, I also, I had one of my own. Not yeah, it. it basically was vesting me with the power to change retirement benefits for non-union individuals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I brought it up. It seemed like an awful lot of power without oversight to be given to one individual at the time. And 
um, is what started the discussion um, at that point. Right. I brought this. Uh, it should be in there. No, I brought my own. Okay, oh, here it gosh. is. I do have it. Sorry. So this was, we were looking at, though, we were looking way back to the very back, the last. Provision 5, I think. Provision 5. Mm -hmm. And um, that is establish or change pension benefits so as to cause unpredictable or inequitable situations. Um, and um, as I was looking at why we were changing that, I was looking back at some of the other things, and it seems like we're you're using the same um, rationale, but for some reason in this one, the rationale you didn't think was sufficient enough. Um, I, not necessarily the rationale. Like I said, the thing that came out to me was this, this idea that oversight of this is probably a, a good, good idea because it is a lot of power to vest in one person. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing you want is you want to is to be in a position where you potentially have a corrupt person who is giving more to friends and less to enemies than um, you know. This is fair and equitable, but unless there's oversight, how do you know? Um, you're taking you're taking my word for it. So I talked with Pietro about this. Pietro um, basically said, "Yeah, it does seem like a lot of power to vest in one person." Um, and he recommended that at a minimum that I should inform the board of any changes before they are implemented. So not necessarily seeking approval, but, but putting it on your table, this is what I intend to do. And so I've changed my interpretation to kind of include that piece there that, yeah, you know, if, if there are any changes being contemplated or, or intended to go into place, um, they will not be executed until the, the board has been fully informed. So you changed your interpretation. Are you going to give us an updated monitoring report that gives us that interpretation? Uh, I, I can do it now, or you can wait until the next next round that it comes. But I've, I've already up, actually updated it in my, my copy of it. Um, and that kind of covers what, you know, PHO was suggesting, just to make sure that you're in the loop if I'm contemplating doing right. this and that so you hear we, about it before it's Were we done. accepting this one this time? No, it was already accepted. It was already accepted. Yeah. So, so for the next time, so you've already made those changes in the interpretation. Yeah. And we already accepted the interpretation you gave. Yeah. I just brought um, it up as an aside that, hey, as I'm looking through mm -hmm. things, this, this seems like an awful lot to invest in one person. We didn't accept with the exception of that last one. It went, you can check back on the records, it went through the two. I thought we accepted the report with the exclusion of that one, which is going to be. I'll be able to tell you. <laughs> EL 27. Motion was made to have Pietro attorney review provision number five in the EL 2.7 policy and to advise the board of any wording changes that should be made in provision number five. So we didn't accept. We didn't accept the EL 2.7. No, that was the second oh, reading. Oh, wasn't okay. Was I know we had the second reading. Mm -hmm. We had the second reading. At the second reading, we made a motion to have that reading. Right. So, so this so, would be the first reading. Well, this would be, if he gives us the one with the new interpretation, we need to look at that and... So I'll get, I'll give the, I can give that to you now or I can give it to you at the next. I already, I already put it in there. Let me see if I can find it. I can email it to all of you. I don't know if it's appropriate, though, if it's not, not as part more. of the public packet. Yeah. Um, so it might be better to wait till the next meeting. Okay. I think that, yeah, we would just have to put on the agenda that next meeting will review the updated, the updated EL 2.7. Okay. Good memory. Yeah, I just, I just awesome. Amazingly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we hadn't accepted that one. So we'll... We'll put that in. So we'll do that as a second. Will we consider this? If he gives the us, if you email it all to us, the next meeting, the August meeting, that'll be the first review of that. 
I think, it's not I a, think we could call it the second reading. Or we'll call it the, the second updated, reading and the updated. Yeah, it's not a interpretation. Re, readings go along with changes to policy. I'm not. You're not changing right, policy. Right. I'm just revising my interpretation. Right. Um, based upon a, a discussion that I brought up with the board. Right. Yeah, second reading with a revised interpretation on. And and. Provision number five. Right. So we'll just well it's it, yeah we'll just decide on that interpretation so it's a it's whether or not yeah and I, did, I did a little bit of research that. myself on it and the problem with this because these are non-union folks um, finding consistent comparables is difficult right? if you check five different districts they're doing five different things um, you know it's one it's one thing you know, um, which right. is not that amount of variability. Doesn't, doesn't uh, number three though tell you if they don't if it if they don't have exactly the same first same position that you look at the skills? Where was it? I was reading through this. Um, yeah, establish or change compensation and benefits that deviate materially from geographical or professional market for the skills employed. But what I'm saying is with, with these particular retirement benefits, there's a dramatic amount of variability in what districts offer. So mm -hmm. if, if, the, if one district is offering nothing and the next district is offering five times what we're offering and there's five districts that are doing different things in between, then what is truly comparable? Um, it gets complicated. You know, you right. can do averaging or things like that, but... Um, I feel like it's hard to have a discussion until we can see the rationale for next meeting. Well, he's got to interpret that. So it says you will use statewide comp compensation data to negotiate and establish salaries and benefits for all non-unionized employees. When this data is not available, the superintendent will use the salary and benefits of comparable district positions as a basis for determining overall compensation. So that's the interpretation of that, of that that he's using. And we then have to decide if we agree with that interpretation. So, yeah. and if we need more, we need to tell them we disagree with that interpretation. Yeah. And that's like I said, as I've been investigating this piece, you know, the variability piece became more, you know, we've never, we've never changed retire retirement compensation except on the non-union folks mm -hmm. um, but as I investigated as part of this in the conversation with PH or like I said the variability became obvious um, partly because some districts rather than increasing salaries significantly <laughs> will pump additional into retirement to compensate for the fact that they have low salaries some districts that have high salaries change their retirement piece because uh, the salaries are so high so again, variability makes compar comparables difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to present this. We'll look at this. Yeah. So we'll, so, and if you want, you can look again at the other provisions since we're basically, this is his monitoring report for 2.7 compensation and benefits. So, um, any of his interpretations and, and rationale and evidence, we can question it if we have questions. All right, so moving on. Um, we are, we haven't gone back to, oh, Annual Are you looking on the revised agenda? Oh, I am not looking at the revised agenda. That's my problem, because I'm like, wait a minute. This is not where we're supposed to be. Um, so, I'm, so I am totally confused. So I did. So we jumped. Sorry about that. We're at Board Education and Ownership Lincoln. Yeah, sorry about that. I should just peel this one off. Ah. Jumping ahead, I was like, I was like, move. what is going on? Okay, I, sorry, I'm getting rid of that one, so it doesn't mess with me. I am. I will. I'm going to make a motion that we table 
um, both five and six for this meeting. We are looking at an hour for these topics, and it's mm -hmm. 20 and I don't think this has to be thoughtful conversation, and I just feel that at this point in the evening, it's going to be difficult to have that. Okay. Due to exhaustion. So do we have, do you have a suggestion? I, I move to table this to um, our August meeting or to hold a special board training that focus that focuses only on these two topics. Special, special yes. work meeting, yes. Um, let's let's talk about it. I think we should have a special meeting to just talk about both things and just be able to spend the time and do it. Mm -hmm. I also think other hearings should be their own special meeting. It's mm -hmm. a really hard gear to to go from yeah, that, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and and to give both the hearing and then the agenda items the brain power that they deserve is really hard. Mm -hmm. So can we make that a policy? Sure. Yeah. Well, it it, it could. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a policy, well, but maybe it'll just be a procedure or a process that when we have hearings, we'll make those special meetings. I'm I'm totally okay with that. Um, other board members on? Well, but that the motion on the table is the, the yeah. moving five and six. We made a mess of your motion. Yeah. Yeah. Say so should we pick a date? And just... um, so I move to table the discussion on board education ownership linkage and monitoring organization to a further date to be determined for a special meeting on those two topics. Okay. I'll second that. And we'll send a doodle poll. So are you amending it so that it's you're adding that and we'll send out a no I don't have to I don't have to, no, add, don't have don't to add, add that, that. okay just do that okay I'm to say so it's seconded any further discussion or regarding that okay so all those in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 all those opposed and then uh, then hopefully Megan can also participate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think she would appreciate being a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll send out a doodle poll. Do you want to do that or or do we want to have our clerk Linda do that? Linda. Linda, you want to send out a doodle poll or do you want me to do it? Sure, I can do it. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Okay. So we're going to table. Uh, Five, board education five and, and five and six thank you and we monitoring seven. Oh, we discussed yeah yep. can i ask you or we discussed when eight. you want to do this i mean give me a ballpark or some dates or july, something august. july our Before next meeting august. is august, august, august meeting so so maybe like two weeks. in the middle of that <clears throat> that will be the last week of July first week of August. I will not be here for the next board meeting. We'll be on vacation. Is now a good time to tell everyone? <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, we throwing that out there. Thank you. That is yeah. not the first week in August. Is I did not for me. <laughs> we'll look at our doodle poll. We'll throw out yeah. dates. I'm going to July is that. Yeah, between now and. <laughs> We'll figure it out. You guys have a preference to date? No, just like, we'll just do we'll just do okay. we'll just do our doodle poll and see what times come back and dates come back if we do a, a two week thing. That'll work. So we're doing two weeks from the last two weeks and or the last week in July and the first week in August. I'll say yeah, I'll send it out. I'll do it, Linda. I'm happy okay. to do it for you. I'll do it. Thank okay. All right. So we'll we'll just doodle poll. Stay tuned. Okay, um, so next up, and this I also, um, we should probably just add that also, the monitoring the board, assess board's compliance with 4.2. Mm -hmm. yep. Do so you I'm, wanna just I'm add that add on? That. We're Is adding it? in number nine, monitoring board will also be added in my motion, please, thank you. So five, six, and nine. Yeah, so five, six, and nine. That's it? <laughs> we missed eight. No, eight, eight was the was 
we talked Two, about. Seven, five, six. Oh, we don't have okay. a seven. Never mind. It's okay. all right. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> What's the Actually, thing? sevens in, no. That's yeah, good. We just have a little bit of a punch. punch. I think <laughs> eight, eight is missing, but it's. Yeah, it's, uh, it skipped a number. I it's noticed that earlier. Yeah. So Sorry. now we're just at the consent agenda. This was kind yeah. of a crunch revision. So right. Like that. Yeah. No. Okay. Do we need to vote on having nine added? I mean, technically, we probably do. Yeah. Amend if it. you're if you're taking it off a public agenda. Yeah. yeah. Amend. Well, we'll amend that to add nine to that as well. So, so I move to add that or add nine to that. Do so we have a second? Amendment. Seconded by Hannah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So then we're moving on to the consent agenda. So this was minutes from the last meeting. Uh, new hires. Uh, the non-union master agreements. Yeah. I have a question on one of those. Sure. First, I want to thank you for the yellow highlights. Yeah, there wasn't a lot to for the changes. Most I appreciate that. <laughs> the one that stood out to me was in the um, non-union master agreements. So there was admin one, admin two, supervisor, confidential. And it was the confidential that had something added that the others didn't. And that's what stood out to me. There were some things that were just clarification of wording that didn't change meaning, and some things that were so. So two of them, actually, all of them had added um, holidays. Right. Um, there were two of them that also changed the life insurance amounts, and that was yeah. the the supervisor and the confidential, and the ra rationale behind that was. Um, that those policies, those little term policies, were originally intended to be able to cover funeral expenses. Five thousand dollars does not cover a funeral expense in this day and age. Um, Ten probably doesn't cover it, but it's closer. Okay, now I don't know. I feel like I made it up. And then oh, the, the other probation. one. Probation. Sorry. Yeah, that was one that was clarifying language, wasn't changing anything. So read, read to me what it, what it said. Well, but so in the confidential one, it says during said probationary period, the employee may be discharged at the sole discretion of the superintendent in the yep. confidential one. But the others do not have that sentence. The others just say a newly hired supervisor will be offered a contract with a probationary period of six months. But it doesn't have that um, at the sole discretion of the superintendent. Clause. That was probably from old. Which part was highlighted on it? I, I the the it extra there. sentence was highlighted in the confidential one, but wasn't in the others. And maybe because of the purpose of the confidential. Yeah. Like a principal shouldn't be able to fire them. Uh, because they might. So there are certain employees that the board has the authority over. So anyone with an AOE license. Aha. You guys, that's why you, you get in the consent agenda usually, you know, the teachers, you get principals, you get superintendent. Um, folks that do not require an AOE license, um, the legal authority for their hiring and firing is the superintendent. You're making me think so, that, which is probably why I put that. Because, well, the four ways to terminate a contract are all the same. Yes. It's that probation that it can be done during the probation oh, yeah. period. Yeah. With the with the with the other with the other folks though, um, I couldn't terminate them. I have to bring it to the board and go through the process. But but the confidential employees Con you anyone you who does can. not require an AOE license for their position, you have the discretion. Uh, yeah, that by by statute I have the discretion the board does not. Got it. Thank you. So sorry about that. No, so no, thank you. For there's so many. I'm glad you bring it up. There's so many pieces. It takes me time to draw up the info at times. So yeah. yeah. So during well, that good, probationary good period, question. they would still come ahead in front of the board for a recommendation of termination. Not, no. not, not the confidential. No, not the these others. other ones. So yeah. bus drivers, um, confidential secretaries, anyone who doesn't require an AOE license for their position, are people that that are are, are hired and. Wait. So the administrative ones should have that sentence as well then. The administrators all require an AOE license to do their jobs. With the exception of some of the supervisors. Mm -hmm. And, su and right. so you're, you're getting into an issue that we were actually discussing earlier this morning is why the heck do we have four different categories of admin? There should be mm -hmm. two. Okay, yeah. There should be those that are the boards, there should be those that are the, the, the superintendents of the districts. Mm 
Like the, the, yeah. The business manager, do they have to have an AOE license? Is there She's a under a contract. One? Yeah. So they're and, grouped with the principals. I, I, yeah, I don't and know some of that was being this. done before my time, and I was asking Pietro questions about it, like what makes a confidential employee who fits under the contract? Mm -hmm. There is no good answer. His answer was continue to do what you have been doing, what the district has been doing. Really? Because there's not a, a good definition of what that is, especially when it comes to potentially moving people in and out of other master agreements. So the real solution may be to eventually revise these so that there's two. Uh, there's one that covers people with AOE licenses, and there's one that covers people that don't have them. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, because yeah, there was no rhyme or reason to me. We had that big discussion when we were rehiring the AD director. Why isn't the AD, AD, AD director uh, an admin too versus a supervisor? Uh-huh. There, there, were, there were decisions made long before my time. They've always been a supervisor. It seems like they should be admin too. Um, the tech director who does require a license, you know, why was she always on a lower one? I moved her up to admin one last time um, based upon that. Uh -huh. um, it came in front of you. Yeah, but there, there's some messes there that need to be cleaned up. Well, thank you for clarifying that. that yeah, was, thank you for the question that. and making me rethink that because I did these <laughs> changes a while ago and sometimes it takes me a while to... And, and in talking with folks. Uh, but the major changes to all of them was adding the two additional um, holidays, um, the Indig Indigenous Peoples Day and Martin Luther King Day, and that came about the com in terms of comparables. Um, I do the master uh, schedule um, and work with the uh, districts that send their students to us, and there are things that they have that we haven't. Um, don't know why that, that was, so I was adding them in to be more comparable with that. Um, the other thing that was changed just in the supervisor and the confidential um, contracts was the idea of increasing that little term life insurance policy to hopefully get it more in line with what an actual funeral cost would be. And then the last piece had to do with um, going off and taking education courses on the district's dime, um, just making sure that, you know, that, you know, if we're going to be paying for it, then we want you to get at least a B, plus, B minus. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, my second. And everything else pretty much stays the same. But we do need to go back and, and review that. We're, like I said, we're having a discussion this morning about why we got four different layers. And there was no good answer that anybody could remember. Uh, they approve the, the um, reserve funds. Those. Do we, do we normally have, we have to do a separate vote on that, correct? Or, uh, that or you could get... vote to include it in the, okay. you have to do a separate vote, you could vote it separately or you could vote to include it as part of the consent okay. agenda. Can I ask a question about that? Yeah. Um, I'm, if I'm reading this correctly, it says that uh, as far as this proposal, is this exclusion to the proposal? Is it hazardous materials testing and removal? Is that excluded in this bid contract? Uh, bid? They've already, before they could go out to bid, they already had to test to see if that was going to be an issue. Um, it was, it shouldn't be. So there's no concern? It, if they, so what they're saying in their contract is if they encounter that, that may change the cost of, of doing yeah. the work. Um, but under state regs, before we do any kind of deconstruction or construction, we have to follow our asbestos policies and things like that and come in and do random testing in those areas to see if those hazardous materials existed. And they did not. We were lucky enough that this was a building that was old enough that those weren't problems. Mm -hmm. um, you have some buildings, you know, if they're right in that, that certain time period, you're probably going to see PCBs, you're probably going to see asbestos. This building is so old that um, is my guess is that that just wasn't a problem at the time. And when is this? What's the plan for a time? If you, you if this is approved, um, it is already going out to bid. Um, if they get three bids on it, which is unlikely, um, it could start as soon as next week. If they don't get three bids, they have to go to a waiver process. Um, so say they get one bid, they have to ask for waivers on the state on the other two, saying, "Hey, we went out and did our due diligence, but nobody wanted to step up and do it." Um, that'll probably extend it another week. Um, so the hope is early August as this work starts. Okay. Um, try to get it up and done. Wow, staffing shortages everywhere. The auditor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. 
keep um, you you do, you left out how much we have in the reserve. Two point seven five million. It's <laughs> on the other handout. Oh, that was yeah. I, I confirmed it with Robin okay. today. There's two point seven five million in there. And this McGee is part of that. Part so of there's the you'll see there's there's two dollar amounts there. There's like the three forty three and yeah. off. That is for the internal work. Um, the McGee is for the office furniture. We've actually already paid for half of it um, out of out of our, our remaining funds, but to pay off the second half is going to require from the reserve fund. So I think that's another seventeen thousand on top. Okay. So that three whatever total yeah. is, that's the two together. There will also be outside work that is done. Uh, they have some pretty serious repairs. They have to do the wood around the window sills and then get that painted. Um, that's a separate. Piece, which we think we can just do within our regular budget. I think it'll be between five and seven thousand, as far as we can tell right now. The one thing that I do want to say about this reserve request is that, given the supply chain issues and the cost of materials, um, things could change by fifteen percent, um, depending upon what happens between now and when they actually get started and start pur purchasing the materials to get this done. Um, let's see. So this is. Uh, renovates inside central <laughs> office includes uh, a minor redesign of the office space, re replacing repairing walls, um, changing some doors, uh, replacing the flooring, putting in an efficient HVAC system, putting in efficient LED lighting, repairing plumbing, electrical upgrades, finishing the basement for safe storage of materials, and then replacing the office furniture. Um, and like I said, the outside work will be a little bit different. We're planning on getting the, the windows. Anything to protect the asset that needs to be done is going to be done this year. Um, and then next year, the intent is probably if you go and you take a look at um, Chef's Market in town, the painting scheme that they have when they painted their bricks, we're probably going to bring the same colors over uh, and do that as well to keep the bricks from further degrading. Bricks weather over time. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of kind of the long-term plan to get that done. Sorry about that. I don't yeah. know if there's, there's questions that folks have. <clears throat> okay, so are there any other questions on any of the material in the consent agenda? Well, the appointment of school district joint officers and the approval of signer change for Bar Harbor account. I don't see those on my... Yeah, so um, appointment of school district truancy officers, this is something we're supposed to do every year. Um, typically by July 1st, I ran across the obscure <coughs> reference in the, the general laws when I was flipping through. Um, our principals have always done this process anyway, so it makes the most most sense to appoint them. Um, it would be um, Patty Sprague, who is new at Braintree, Melinda Robinson um, for RES, Lisa Floyd, Katie Sutton for the high school, and then David Roller for Brookfield. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's who I'm recommending to the board to appoint to those positions. Um, their role is actually to connect with the courts um, if students um, are, you know, the word is true, but if they're absent, absent for school um, consistently without the right reasons to be absent, mm -hmm. um, they have a responsibility the district does to get them connected with the court system to get that resolved. And then it's, uh, if it's approved, then Linda, as the, the school clerk, um, her job is to record it and then to <coughs> notify the town offices of who those folks are. Police officers in the town are de facto truancy officers just because of their role. Um, you don't have to appoint them, they just are. <clears throat> and then the approval of signer change for Bar Harbor Hill. So that, I believe, if I remember correctly, is to change over um, the brain tree. Student activities account um, to Patty Sprague, the new principal. I went in to try to do it, and they said, you guys had to approve it. <laughs> One of the reasons the name changes have been so difficult, like going from OSSU to OSSD, right? And some of the things that she was talking about in the auditor's report is the idea that back when we were separate boards, uh, they still have the old OSSU designation as opposed to OSSD. It is incredibly difficult um, to work with the bank to make these changes. Um, you did some approvals of some last winter. Um, I mean, we, the hoops that we have to hop through and the people that have to vote and sign, and um, it's a pretty involved process. Um, I was so frustrated with it at the time. I asked Robin, is, are we better off dealing with a different bank? But, uh, because I, I've never seen it that extensive. It's probably a good thing, but um, so it does take some time. Yeah. And Linda, will you put her name in the minutes? They asked that her name mm -hmm. would be in the minutes. Oh. 
Patty Sprague. Patty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Matter of fact, all those all those folks that I'm recommending should be in there. Do you, last before there used to be a list, but you didn't. You were saying you didn't see no, it didn't in the see packet. Uh, oh, you meant the people you're recommending for true and officers. Yeah. yeah. True and officers. No, no I'm, that there was discussion. There is the list of the the. New hires. The new hires. Yeah. Yep. Right. But I didn't see the true officer and into the approval for sign change. That's why I was asking about this. Too. Oh, the signing change one should be in there. It's no, not in there. Yeah. No, there was anything that I was given. Uh, Robin, Robin had it. I thought she had handed it over. I actually saw it and signed off on it because I had a signature to do on it from her. If you, no, they'll just ask you to bring a copy of the minutes when you sign. That's yeah. why I just right. have the name of the minutes and the minutes. Um, do you need the account number? I have it. Yeah, don't worry about it tonight. Okay. <laughs> uh, I make a motion to approve the consent consent agenda. Do we have a second? Okay. Wait. Oh, you can discuss. No, I'm not Wait. discussing. We need to vote to include, I think, oh, the, including the reserve the funds. Reserve funds for the OSSD renovation. I second it. Any discussion? Mm. So all those in favor of uh, approving the consent agenda, including the, the reserve fund allocation, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank okay. You. That's passed. Okay. So uh, recap. We, um, we got off schedule. <laughs> with our hearing however i've heard clearly from the board that the next time we have a hearing that we want to do it as a special meeting mm -hmm. um, and therefore we can focus on the work that we have to do um, given that we are charging our clerk to or no oh, it's me. no katja is going to be sending out a doodle poll to try and uh, create a time that works for the majority of us to do a special meeting um, to do the items uh, board education um, working on our annual board agenda so that's that piece where we map out what we're going to be doing in each of our meetings so um, it's really tiny but if you pull it out and and open it in google sheets you can see it a little bit better so think about it sort of outlines everything that we're going to do for the full year so think about what you would like to see added what you think might be missing that sort of thing um, and don't forget to read in your our new handy dandy books here read about ownership linkage read about monitoring uh, read about annual agenda. Uh, mine so it's a mine looks, it's a different edition. Okay, it's just gotcha. an earlier edition, but it's gotcha. the same. It has the same content because I checked. Um, so that will be really great preparation, just those few chapters um, before we do that work. Um, and then... Uh, this needs assessment oh that was the um goes along with the continuous improvement plan oh, okay okay and the nurse leadership grant that oh this was, was incidental information yeah. okay um so uh and then the other thing that i had on here um rachel chelsea and i remember we're gonna do sort of a brief orientation in that August meeting, our real August meeting, not the special meeting, but the August meeting just to sort of go over kind of thinking about our processes and what it means to be a board member and that sort of thing. So that meeting is August 12th or something. That's August. Yes. Yes. I think yes. just noting that <coughs> one of our new board members will not be here that night. So I will also not be here at a conference. So maybe we'll oh, okay. So maybe we move that to September. So uh, let's keep that uh, in mind. So I will have that. Um, and then Lane, do you want to 
Do you want to share anything about the needs assessment and the? So there, there are two documents there. They should just show up on the board agenda. They don't necessarily need an approval. You know, usually a vote of support is is good. Um, the continuous improvement plan. Um, it kind of it pulls from the strategic plan, um, the work that was done um, with Winton way back then. It pulls from the district analysis of student performance. That's what the data inventory um, that's in there um, as a part of it um, is included as. Um, it's relative to the ENDS report, um, pulls from there as well. And it's connected to kind of the state and the federal performance expectations for students. Um, and in this year, it was also connected to the needs that we had to be able to operate safely in person under COVID. Um, so it pulled from all those parts and pieces, and it's basically a strategic plan based upon that for the next one to three years. Um, it is required by the state, who then uses it to the federal government to keep the federal dollars rolling in. Um, the data inventory is probably of more interest um, to the board um, because that kind of talks about student performance in the areas that we're concerned about with the ends. Um, and usually you do that analysis first to figure out what your strengths and your weaknesses are, and then you build the continuous improvement plan to address the weaknesses. Um, so I don't know if there's a kind of a broad general overview of, of what it is. It's a lot of work, but it's, um, it's good work. And that is, is that this? This is our continuous, or is this? That's mm -hmm. the data inventory. So pre, the pages before that will be the, the full document of the um, continuous improvement plan. Okay. And at this, this here is the needs report? That's the, the data inventory. So it's kind of a needs assessment. Okay. Right. So you're that's taking, what you're taking a look at all your district data, student performance, and, and trying to figure out what's what's going well, what's not, okay. and what you need to apply some. You know, budget's the biggest tool to be able to impact things, which you're going to apply some funding towards to see if you can get some improvements going. Okay. Um, and then the nurse leadership grant. Yeah, that was one. You can talk talk probably more more than I can on it. Um, that was a, a grant that the nurses are, are pulling together for the specific purpose of developing a leadership hierarchy and, and better training for nurses across the, across the state. Um, part of the reason that that's here is it's nice um, to get the support of the board as they're applying for that and to be able to state that that support is there. Um, it is a competitive grant that will help them in that competition. Mm -hmm. yep. So do you need from us some... Um, a vote of support would be great, but not necessary if it's on the agenda so that you've at least seen it. That's really what the um, committee that's going to be doing the review um, is looking for. Yeah, it's, okay. it's $70,000 to support um, professional development and growth for nurse leadership. Right. And it was a very well-designed grant that provided like template letters. And it was very clear that it wanted uh, the board to be notified. Yeah. Okay. So this is notification to yeah. us that and, you're applying. And she did the, and she did the Beth awesome. Osha, Beth Osha did, really, yeah. Beth and Sadie did all the work. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But had, had to work very closely with them on it, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyone not in support of this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, I, mean, I, th I, I, I think, think they've earned it. The board recognize the nursing leadership grant and its potential importance. Is there a motion to our district? Yes. Seconded. <laughs> Seconded by Hannah. All those, any, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good luck. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the data, we just, we already talked about that. All right. 850. Move to adjourn. Let's move to adjourn. I'm seconding because I'm going for 100% of the second digit. Oh,